Hello web developers, uh, welcome to the Watts 3010 Hello World assignment. Um, this is an introduction and a walkthrough so that you can get a little bit used to the Code Anywhere environment. You can complete this assignment and you can get used to working with Git and using Git to uh, send your files back and forth between github.com, which is where we will store our files and where we will be hosting our static websites throughout this quarter. So, uh, to begin, we will need to go to uh, the SU Web Development webpage and you will need to find um, the Hello World repository. Uh, this repository was uh, created a while ago, so the, the course number is still Watts 1010, but this is the Watts 3010 Hello World repository. This is linked in your uh, Canvas course instance, so you'll be able to just click the link and you'll end up right here on the Hello World page. Um, you will then uh, need to look at the instructions, uh, which are a little bit different when you see them than they will be here just because you no longer need to manually do this step four, so I'll be editing that. Um, but what you want to do is you want to click this fork button right here and make your own copy of this repository. So I'm going to fork and it will say where do you want to fork it and I want to fork it into my Sean R account. So I will click that and it will fork it for me. And again this is making a separate copy of the files in your repository. So you'll own this forever and ever um, until you decide to get rid of it. And this is now your copy that you can use within uh, code anywhere or any anywhere else that you want to use um, these files so I'm gonna go back to code anywhere here and when I log into code anywhere I'm given the editor interface and it should look yours should look pretty much like this one if you click the little user icon here you'll see that um, you have your account information here and you can click the account dashboard the account dashboard will take you usually to the billing page but once you get there you can go to uh, the account page and you can um, you can then uh, choose your connected accounts. Um, we want to connect GitHub, so I will connect GitHub. And because I'm already logged into GitHub and I've already given permission to code anywhere, um, it's just going to bounce me right back. For you, it will probably pop up a little login window, which will ask you to log into your account, and then it will tell you code anywhere needs a bunch of permissions to work with your GitHub account, and it will expect you to say yes, that's okay. Um, it's okay. It's safe to give code anywhere those permissions at this point in time, um, and you can uh, then you should see that the button switches to disconnect. Um, and we don't want to push that because we just connected it. So again, you want to make sure that your GitHub account is connected on Code Anywhere. Once you've done that, you can come back here to the demo, and um, or to your uh, to your editor interface, and you can right click on your um, on your project here. Now my project is named Demo here. Your project might be named Default or um, or something else depending on uh, on what they're doing now when they create new accounts. Uh, that doesn't really matter. You just can right click on it, and you can. Um, you can make a new connection. So you want to make a new connection and then in the connection wizard you should be able to select GitHub and it will refresh and then populate with your repositories from GitHub. So I can do a little filter by typing hello there and I can see now I'm in a little bit of a unique situation. I have multiple ones here because I'm in the organization SU Web Dev and so I'm going to select the one though that is for my account and you'll notice that it will automatically say, um, give you the little HTML5 logo here. Uh, that makes sense. Um, and that's because this auto detect stack checkbox is checked. Um, for now, you may as well just leave that checked and go ahead and move forward by hitting next. Um, it will then give me um, information about creating the container. And I will wait until it finishes creating the container. And then we'll pick up again. I'll probably put this on fast forward while we wait. Great. So now that we have uh, this project cloned over, uh, it's worthwhile to take a look at some of the files that were created there. Now, these files look like the ones that we had in the repository on GitHub. If we click over to GitHub here, we see a git ignore file, a license file, a readme.md file, and an index.html file. So we see those here. We also see this extra directory, which is the .git directory. 
Remember that Git is a tool that you use to control the versions of your files, and it's a very sophisticated tool. We're not learning everything about Git right now. What we want to do is just learn a few commands that we're going to use on pretty much a daily basis as developers. Uh, but, but it's useful to know a little bit more about Git, um, at least just enough to know that this .git directory contains stuff that we don't really want to mess with. And it could confuse us a little bit because some of the file names might look similar to file names in our projects, but we don't really want to be editing in there unless we've got a problem with our Git repository uh, that we're trying to work out. Mostly we're going to be editing these files right here. This git ignore um, file is helping us not add certain things uh, to our repository. We don't really need to worry about that at this point. The only file that we really want to modify here in, uh, in this assignment is this file right here, which is the index.html. And you're just gonna change it enough to, to let us know that you've actually successfully cloned this project and, um, and been able to edit it. So um, I'm just going to say, um, this is an assignment by Sean Ryder. I'm gonna put that in the title. You'll learn more about markup soon. But, um, and then I'm also going to put that in the body of the page. So I'm going to, uh, save that. Now, if I want to see what that looks like as a web page, um, then I can right click here and I can hit uh, the run button on this container and it will open up a new tab and it will show me my changes here. And you'll notice that um, this shows me Sean Ryder here in the body. That's great. So I know my changes worked and they're visible online and I don't have any bugs or anything that I need to fix. You could obviously do a lot more with this if you wanna poke around at, at editing HTML a little more, but that's that's gonna um, come up for you all throughout the rest of this uh, course. So you probably, uh, for now, are better off to focus on uh, getting your changes committed and pushed back up. And to do that, um, we want to open the SSH terminal so that we can use Git to uh, to do some, some working with our files. So I'm going to open this SSH terminal. This is a terminal to the computer that you are working on on Code Anywhere. You have a development computer that we just created. That's why we waited all that time for the box to get created. Um, when it says create a new container, that container is actually a server online that is containing your files and it, you're able to work with it to do all of the work that you need. And that's what allows us to preview the file like we just did in the new tab, but that's also what will allow us to work with the commands that we need to work with Git. So there's a couple of useful commands when you're working with files. The first one is ls, which will just list the files. And you can just see here, if I run ls, I just see the files that I expect to see. Now, I don't see the git ignore file because any file that starts with a period is not gonna show up um, in default ls commands. That's fine. Uh, mostly we'll be able to ignore files that start with periods uh, throughout the duration of this course. Um, we can also uh, run um, the command git, uh, and that gives us um, some information about how to use git. And all of this seems very complicated and very difficult at first. Um, what we want to do is actually just run a couple of very specific commands. So I'm going to um, clear my screen with the clear command, and then I'm going to run git status. And that's going to show me the current status. And what I can see is that I'm on the master branch, and I have modified index.html. Um, what I want to do is to create a new branch, and this is a special branch that allows us to publish web pages at GitHub. Um, and that is the GH Pages branch. This branch is a special name, that's a special branch name that GitHub will recognize and when it sees that we've pushed code to the GH Pages branch, it will then deploy that code on the GitHub free GitHub Pages server. That GitHub Pages server will host any static website for us and anyone in the world can view it. So that's where you can see the running code and then you can go to the repository on GitHub and actually see the source code. And we'll take a look at what that looks like in just a second. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new branch. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to use um, a, a command called git checkout. Git checkout checks out any branch and branches can contain different code, and Git handles changing the code when you check out a branch. It's kind of magical. Um, we're gonna do dash B, and the dash B means create a new branch, 
And then the branch name that we want to give this is GH Pages. So now we've um, switched to a new branch, GH Pages, and we can see that our terminal tells us that right there, that we switched to a new branch. Very important to read the output that Git gives you because it will usually tell you about whatever issues it's coming in contact with, and it will usually give you a way to solve issues as well if it comes, it comes into any errors or, or conflicts. Um, now that we've made the GH Pages branch, we, we, want to, um, we want to commit files to this branch to make a commit. And in order to do that, we have to do two things. First, we have to add the files, then we have to commit the files. So this is a process that we're going to go through over and over again. So um, we're gonna say um, git add index.html. It's always best to type in the individual file name of every file that you want to add. You should avoid using any kind of um, techniques that would add lots and lots of files all at once. Um, because that's, first of all, it's not usually necessary, and second of all, it can lead to you accidentally adding things to your repository that you don't intend to add. So be very precise and, and run the command to add that specific file. And then now that we've run git add and then the file name, you can run git status again, and you notice that the file name has turned from red to green. So up here it was red, and down here it's green. And the reason for that is um, because now it has been added, so that is a change that we call staged for commit. The staging area is the stuff that's listed in green, and that means that those things can be committed. So in order to commit it, we're going to use the command git commit, and then we're going to use the flag dash m and give it a message in quotes. So changed text on index page. And so that's how that command looks. The, the, you call git and you use the command commit and then you use the flag dash m which means message and then you type in the message and that message needs to be within quotes so that git knows where the message starts and stops. Once we hit enter, you notice that we get confirmation. Um, we see in the branch gh pages that number that we see here is a um, is the commit number and then um, we also call that a hash a lot of the time the commit hash then um, we see the message that we typed change text on index page and then we see some statistics here that we have one file changed with two insertions and two deletions so that's git git lingo for what actually happened in the file to make those changes so now we can um, run git status again and it says on branch GH pages and then it also says there's nothing to commit working directory clean so that means that we're all caught up we've got all of our work committed we don't have any outstanding changes now we can push this back to github in order to publish our changes in our GH pages branch and in order to do that um, we're going to use the command git push dash u and the dash u means that it's going to update the relationship so that it's going to understand that this local branch is related to the remote branch on GitHub. So GitHub stores a copy of our repository and we're linking these two branches together so that they understand that they're related. Um, git push dash u and then the server, which the server that we cloned from is always the origin server. So GitHub is always our origin server. And then the local name and a colon and the remote name that we want to give this branch. And so that's just the same, GH pages and GH pages. So git push dash u origin GH pages colon GH pages. So that's the full command. So pardon the blip, um, I had a little leftover code from a previous demo that I had done of this. Um, nonetheless, git push dash u origin GH pages colon GH pages is the command. When we run that, you will see that everything gets pushed up and we get a confirmation that a new branch has been created. And then that dash U in the command made this line show up where it says branch GH pages is set up to track the remote branch GH pages from origin. Now again, Git is complicated and GitHub is complicated. You're not expected to understand all of this stuff at first, but right now, this is what, um, you know, this is just the process that you're going to go through and these messages are going to seem more and more normal to you and you'll start understanding more and more of the different pieces of these messages the more you work with this stuff. 
So now that you've done that, you actually have created um, a GH Pages branch. So if we come back here and we refresh the code here, you'll be able to see that there's a GH Pages branch. And if you click into that, you'll notice that the message for the latest commit says that we changed text on the index page. And if I click into that commit, I will see here the exact changes that I made. There's where I, I changed Jane Student to Sean Ryder right there and right there. So all of this has been pushed up to GH Pages. Now if I go to, um, to the GH Pages branch in this repository, if I go here to settings, you'll notice that under GitHub Pages, it says your site is published. So you can publish your, you can view the site here and mine's at seanr.com. That's something that we do in the second quarter um, in the servers and hosting course to set up your personal domain on GitHub. Yours will be your GitHub username.github.io. But nonetheless, you can share this URL with all of your friends and they can view what you did. So um, let's, let's imagine now that you wanted to do a, a couple more changes. Now that you're kind of excited about this, um, uh, you might say something like, um, hello Watts3010, and you might say, I'm very excited for this course, and save it. Now, I'm using Command S to save. You can use Command S or Control S, or you can use the little icons up here um, to save, or you can use the file menu to save, however you, however you want to do that. Um, but uh, now, if I run git status again, You'll notice that I'm back to where I was before. Now the index.html has been modified. But you'll also notice that I'm already on the branch GH pages. So what I can do now, I don't need to make the branch. I can just say git add index.html and hit enter. And if I run git status again, now index.html is staged for commit. So I can run the git commit command again. Git commit dash m and then in quotes, um, added more text to index page page and I can commit that and now that's committed that's committed locally on my development box so now I can push it to github and since I did the big push command before I can now just run git push origin and it will push my new changes um, all the way up now it gives me a little bit of a message here that I don't have um, my username and everything properly configured on the git config. That's okay. Um, it might lead to your uh, project being attributed in kind of weird ways sometimes on GitHub, but, um, but that doesn't actually prevent things from working. You notice that it still actually worked. It, it put up um, seven objects, it uh, got everything, and it, it pushed all the code to GH pages. So now if I go here to my running code and I refresh that page, that's being served off of GitHub at that seanr.com URL. You notice that it now says watch 3010. I'm very excited for this course. And if I go back to my repository here for um, my Hello World repo, you'll notice the repository, when you look at it again, will be on the master branch by default. So if you click into index.html, you won't see your changes. But if you switch to that GH Pages branch, you'll see that our latest commit message is at the top and we can see all of the changes that we made right here. So we've been able to add some additional changes there uh, from Code Anywhere and we've uh, been able to see all of that published on our GH pages uh, for the whole world to see. So now we are um, in good shape and we could go back, we could do more work, we could continue adding, committing, pushing, adding, committing, pushing as much as we need to until we're done with the project. And that's the way that we can stay safe. I recommend that you um, add your files, commit them and push them every time you walk away from the computer, just to make sure that if anything happens on Code Anywhere, you can always start back up from where you left off and you don't ever have to wait for a, a broken dev box to get fixed. These things are disposable boxes, so we just throw them away and get a new one. We don't bother trying to fix them when they break, okay? So good luck with the assignment, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you around in lab, and uh, good luck working with Git and GitHub. It's tricky at first, but it's the kind of thing that once you've done it for an entire quarter, you'll feel a lot better about it. So play around with it and get a good hang of it. Don't be afraid of this command line. Bye.